This episode of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by the Motorola Zoom. Coming up, he's crass, he's rude, he's an alien, and his name is Paul. Today in movies, we are talking about Paul, which is out in theaters tomorrow. Mm. And Paul is a movie that is made for our show and you guys. And here is why. It's about two British comic book geeks, played by Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, who you know from Shaun of the Dead and other Edgar Wright fare, uh, traveling across the US, and they encounter an alien who is voiced by Seth Rogen. Uh, it's also written by Simon uh, and Nick, and it's directed by Greg Matola, who had the big hit a couple years ago with Superbad. But I always say he made this wonderful road trip movie before that called Day Trippers that is on Netflix. Um, who's probably not sponsoring this episode? But hey, uh, just yell at every time. Them, but we love them anyway. So. And this is very much a road trip movie. This is very much a road trip movie with a CG alien, yes. but is not your typical. This is not ET. This is not your your mama's ET. This is a <laughs> this is your, smoking, your drinking, alien. cursing yeah. alien. Yes, Jeff. Yes, sir. Would you go on a trip with Paul? That's a very different question than, than <laughs> I like the movie. Yes. Uh, the uh, the premise of this movie. The premise of this movie is uh, <laughs> is fantastic. You know, what if? An alien gets here in the 50s, and because he's been here since the 50s, he's totally immersed in the culture. And he, he's just a guy like any other, anybody else. Uh, instead of being an alien, he, there's nothing alien about him other than his appearance, right? That's a really brilliant idea. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't really like this movie. And uh, I think it's because it starts really slow and really not funny, uh, and a lot of the stuff just feels really on the nose. And I have to caveat everything I say with the fact that I anticipate a lot of people disagreeing with me about this because I didn't enjoy Superbad, and I know a lot of people love that movie, and I suspect that if you love Superbad, you'll love this. Really? I would never relate them. But... Well, I think the mentality of the films, the tone of the movies are very similar, hmm. and the style of humor that sort of uh, flipping somebody off is a hilarious thing. And there are people on our screening who are like, oh yeah, I totally flipped them off, amazing! And for me, <laughs> that's not, you know, it just doesn't tickle my funny bone. Mm. Um, there is a, a period about two thirds of the way through where it just becomes, it turns into name that reference. And that's fun because it's all referencing all the movies, the Spielberg, Lucas, canon that we all grew up on. Um, but I have to say that as much as, as fun as that is, and as fun as it is when they give great lines to actors and it's very meta and that's cool, for the most part, when it's named that reference, there isn't a joke. It's just the reference. It, and, and an I, interesting point. And I found myself point. going, well, okay, yeah, we all know that that's, you know, when he shoots the, the thing he was talking on and says, uh, boring conversation anyway, we all, yeah, we know that Han Solo says that in Star Wars, but you're not making a joke, you're not adding anything, you're just doing the exact reference. And I would like there to be more than that. Yeah. I also found it a little distracting, I, although I got over it, but I found it a little distracting for the first half of the movie that Seth Rogen was the voice, because I couldn't get Seth Rogen's picture out of my head. Hmm. I didn't, and that was the only problem I had with the alien, because I think the actual CG-ness and the integration of him into the movie is really phenomenal, it's yeah. really good. Yeah, I also didn't really connect with Paul as much as I wanted to. I had my little finger out. <laughs> I was waiting, hoping. Waiting. And then he's got br bright red, and I was like, it's happening. And then nothing happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, the humor is not all there. The problem is, is that so when, the humor, when it happens, can be quite good. And there were definitely laugh out loud moments, but there were very few and far between. Um, I think the, the, the shame of shames in this movie is uh, Jason Bateman. I mean, he basically has a serious role with no comedy. See, and he's such a funny guy. Interesting but I think that you say that dry. because yeah, I think a I lot of. His humor, he was trying to play like that comedy, but it came off as just intense 
guy with no humor. I didn't think he opinion. was playing the joke. But I thought it's. I, 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 I find it interesting that I feel like you may have even made the claim, but if it wasn't you, in general, the complaint is made that we're over. Jason Bateman has a shtick that he always does. I wanted that. And I was like, where's the here, shtick? Here, he did not bring that shtick. And now I feel like, and I, I was left with, why do you hire Jason Bateman? Exactly. For that role? I think yeah. Christine Wig was the best part of the so, movie. So, yeah. just a couple more, a couple points. Yeah. Um, one, uh, you know, I know Simon Pegg has sort of is one of the people who sort of of he's one of our guys. But I actually felt like the beginning of this movie was not, not how funny this group of people. How funny, it really felt like it was almost making fun of the Comic-Con audience and the Comic-Con people, you know what I mean? And I felt like, but the whole point was you guys said that you were sort of with it, and I know that's not what they were trying to do. Well, it's, 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 it's uh, I can make fun of my mom, but you, I mean, they were making fun of their own stuff. I, maybe, but Your it mom. really came off as, it, <laughs> but it did come off as Hollywood celebrities making fun of the people who go and say, we hmm. love Hollywood celebrities. Yeah, like, uh, speaking but it felt Klingon, bad. really? Yeah, speaking but, Klingon? so I think for me, I just had, you know, it just wasn't as funny as it needed to be in order yeah. to really have some home runs. There were some fun moments, but. I think the, the saddest thing about this is that the three of us on this show do not like this movie. It should yeah. be our movie. It should be our favorite movie. I know. Because um, I, I really didn't like it either. And I, I did like the references. Those are fun. And all you guys will love those yeah. moments. I did enjoy those moments. But I actually... But I agree. There's no extra funny. I wished it was as clever as... Um, super bad because super bad <clears throat> sure has dick and fart jokes like like a lot of comedies do but mm. they're clever dick and fart jokes even if you didn't think they were funny there's like a guy drawing penis buck you know it was like there's a, there's a take on that joke this really had one joke and it made it over and over and over again which is here is a thing that looks like E.T. and he's being really vulgar yeah. and once in a while there'd be a fun improv riff moment that that would remind us of a, a, an Apatow film yeah. uh, fu the funnier moments in movies and comedies but for the most part as you said just as you were wanting more out of the reference I was wanting more out of the sense of humor entirely oh yeah in yeah. fact I also feel like this would have been funnier if it was Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah in these leading yeah. roles there was I, I get like it's funny that they're that old and they're still into this stuff and whatever, but I, I think it came off as a little weird to me. And that Simon Pegg, you'd think would be, is really funny in Shaun the Dead, but I could have seen a, a Michael Sarah or Jonah Hill having more improv moments and yeah. a little under the breath moments that would have made it liven, that would have livened it up. There's not a lot of, of good comedy here, and there's not a lot of good character development. The, yeah. the, 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 the relationship, the, you sort of get a little bit of, a uh, friends who are got to have a little bit of a rift, but not really. It shreds very lightly on yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Um, but the special effects are great, and there's an eightiness to this road movie where yeah. we see real explosions mm -hmm. of you know in cars. And, and I have to say, any sequence with a car in it was so well shot. There are this has great car chase shots and yeah. there, there's one in particular that is like a one take where jason bateman is riding in the car oh, and he yeah. literally pulls up so to, it is amazing shot. like shot? What? what is happening he's, like, he's 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 on the so phone it's, so it's a long shot of the car you or think it's just a salvage CD. shot of the car yeah. we're traveling with it and it keeps going keeps going keeps going keeps going and then and he's right and it's literally a close-up of jason bateman on the, like it was all one take yeah. it was phenomenal cool um yeah i, I do think kristen wig was the funniest part of the movie uh and um you know, it's it's interesting that these guys kind of let this be not as good as even their own material in Spaced, which is sort of the same, yeah. in the same place. You know, it's in the same mentality of like making those references and living that nerdy life. But in yeah. Spaced, has a take on those jokes. Right. They don't yeah. just make exactly. references, as you say. And it's sort of, forget those references, and it's still a good, a charming story about friends and roommates, and it has yeah. things to say about that. This doesn't yeah. have anything to say on top of that one joke. Yeah, um, It's really disappointing. It's, it's, disappointing. it's extremely I don't think I, I didn't, I wasn't as disappointed in it as I am right now. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, when yeah, I walked yeah. out of the movie, I, was I, like, well, I didn't wasn't love that great. it, but yeah. there were things to like. Yeah. Now, I think that we're all piling on. Yeah. There's I have to say, here. We, yeah. uh, we came out of Comic-Con seeing stuff about this, and I had the uh-oh feeling then, and yeah. I feel like this is exactly what I thought it was going to be, yeah. sadly. Yeah. And it sucks, because these guys are really smart, clever yeah. writers, and, yeah. and they deliver, they, they live that mentality, they know it. And clearly, they they are very proud of this movie, which is um, great. I just wish it was, you know. Yeah. 
it, it lived up to what I had hoped it could have been. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Paul. that's Paul, y'all. <gasps> All right, everybody, remember to stick around for this day in rad history. But first, we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, we are sponsored by the Motorola Zoom. Ooh, doggies. Epicness of epicness. It's the first tablet powered by the Android 3 Honeycomb, I which so I haven't bad. gotten my hands on, but I've really, I really, I want to test out that honeycombness. Uh, it's got a great 10.1 inch uh, HD widescreen display, 3D interface. Uh, it's got a one gigahertz dual core processor, so it's blazing, blazing fast. Uh, it's got fully flash enabled, uh, a video rich web with uh, uh, tabbed windows for multitasking in the Chrome stuff, which is amazing. Hmm. It's always good to have tabs. I mean, that was like, tabs hello. is welcome to 1990, whatever. Thank you for including tabs. Uh, it's Google Maps. You can tilt, rotate, zoom in 3D, street view stuff, which is crazy to even think. Uh, it's also 4G upgradable, so you can leap from the 3G to the Verizon 4G LTE. Uh, with the mind melting upper limits of speed. And actually, this crazy. marks week two. Yes. We are now in week two of Jeff begs for a Zoom. Yeah, amazing. Please send me a Zoom. Keep begging, my friend. Motorola! All right, people, you, we will one. see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we introduce a new game called Title Fight. Today is March 17th. On this day in 1845, the rubber band is patented. And, the uh, rubber band. And tomorrow in 1845, the first little sister was like, ow! <laughs> That's true. Right? Jeff, true. Love, Jeff loves those yeah. jokes. March 18th. <laughs> March 18th. We'll see you tomorrow. That was sent in by Et Nilisha.